Hello and welcome to another Digimedia Pros tutorial. I'm your host, Marcelo Lewin. Today, I'd like to welcome Colin Smith, a very popular and well-known Adobe evangelist and the creator and host of Video Revealed, a YouTube channel focused on helping people achieve professional-looking videos through easy-to-follow tutorials for Adobe applications. Colin, welcome back to the Digimedia Pros. Thank you very much. Well, it's fun to have you back. And I say back because we've actually done a podcast together, which was very informative, all on making Adobe Premiere Pro perform at its peak. That was a very popular episode. Excellent. So before we get started on this tutorial, how long have you been working with Adobe Premiere Pro? Oh, all the way back to 4.3. This is before Creative Cloud, before Creative Suite. This was uh, around 1997, I think. That's quite uh, a long time ago. Yes. You've seen a lot of changes. Yeah, it's gone through so many changes. Well, it's at least three different full rewrites right from the ground up. Right. I think the one that I remember that I jumped in starting using Premiere was when they completely rewrote it for the Mac. Yeah, rewrote everything. They borrowed the best they could from different applications that, that Adobe already had. So what do you like the most about Premiere Pro? I love the fact that you don't ever have to worry about formats from anything. So almost any video format I bring in, not only that, but After Effects comps, layered Photoshop files, Illustrator files, I just bring them in, giant Canon images. I never have to sit and worry in transcode. I just use the stuff that I have. Now, of course, the other side of the coin is what do you hate the most or like the least? <laughs> well, I would have had a list, you know, 10 years ago, a, a long list, but Adobe keeps knocking things off of that list and just making it a, a better application. One thing that was annoying me that was literally fixed. Uh, Adobe has now on the Windows side, they're supporting QuickTime natively in Premiere Pro in 64-bit on Windows. It's incredible. Up to this time, the one annoying thing was that Adobe had to rely on Apple with their very buggy old 32-bit Apple QuickTime. And if you ever had a project you couldn't open, it was almost always because of some problem with QuickTime import and you had to clear cache out and, and it was a huge annoyance. Just the other day where I had a project I could not open and it was definitely because of QuickTime problems, I uninstalled all the Apple software, installed the newest version of Premiere Pro and the project opened in two seconds with no problems. So today you're going to show us the new proxy workflow in Premiere Pro. So Colin, let me pass it over to you so you can get started. So this is the typical uh, start menu that you get in Premiere Pro. So if we create a new project, we get the typical new project dialog box. And what is new here is a new ingest settings tab over on the right. And uh, this will allow us to ingest. Now, if we leave this off, which is the default, you're going to work with linked media just like you normally would in Premiere Pro. You can get to this dialog box three different ways. So the first way is this way. Um, I'm going to bypass it and just by clicking OK and open up my regular project. And in the media browser, you'll notice a new button here for uh, setting ingest. And again, with this turned off, it's going to function just like you would expect Premiere Pro to uh, work. If you click on the wrench, it's going to open that same project settings dialog box. And then the third way in the file menu, project settings, ingest settings. All of them get you to this same spot. So what is the ingest settings? Well, this is going to allow us to create uh, proxies or copies. So there's four different workflows in here. You enable them by clicking on ingest and choosing one of these four. So the first is just copying the media. Um, so this will bring it into uh, your location wherever you set it. Here's your primary destination of where the clips will go. You can either copy with or without verification. MD5 is the preferred um, verification. And there's a button over here on the right to click to add an ingest preset. And uh, ingest presets, uh, you can load them in, you can create them from media encoder. Right now they're a little bit messy to create, but Adobe's going to make that a little easier. So let's look at the uh, copy with verification. So you can make the location of that media the same as the project. The preset itself can have its own destination built into it. Um, you can also have it go to your Creative Cloud files. Uh, very, very few people are doing this because 
well, you have to upload everything and there's a 20 gigabyte limit and you have to make sure you turn off synchronization if you have this turned on uh, or else it will start synchronizing before they're finished. And then lastly, probably the most common is choosing a location. So we're not making proxies yet. That's just copying them. Next is to transcode. And here we get to uh, transcode to any of these formats that are in this drop down menu or you can, like I said before, add an ingest preset. It's very important that um, the presets match the source uh, because if you have something like the frame rate different, you're, you're transcoding to 23976 and the original is 2997, all your keyframes will not line up. The same primary destination will show up in here. Now let's get into just creating proxies. So you'll notice the primary de destination is grayed out and you now have a proxy destination of where this is going. Um, back over in the top, you have presets that you can choose and you'll notice that these are much smaller, lightweight uh, proxy uh, generation and it takes care of all the scaling for you in Premiere Pro so you don't have to worry about that. And then the fourth one is to copy and create and it, it links these proxies to the original media right away. So these are the formats, uh, H.264, Cineform, or we can add um, a new preset. And again, now you'll notice primary destination for the copied media and the proxy destination can be two different things. Okay, so let's just create a proxy. You don't want to wait for me to do all of that. So you'll notice that clicking in that dialog box also enables it here. Um, so if I now right click on this clip and choose import, the file is imported right here and I can begin to work with that file, but it's still a red file. So this is a very large file or maybe you're doing this with um, Cinema DNG or Airy, anything that's very large that, that you, you need a proxy for. In the background, Media Encoder is actually rendering this and it would do this for all the clips that you have going on. It will pause every single time you play the timeline. Um, this is still the red media. So you actually have to go out of your way and turn on proxies inside Premiere Pro to be able to use that. And that's very easy to do. In the uh, program monitor, if you go to your button editor, and you'll notice a brand new button right here, toggle proxies. So I'll drag that down, click OK, and when I click on this, it's going to turn blue and I've now toggled the proxy. So you'll notice that this is lickety split and I can hit play and it plays back and I'm turning proxies on and off just by clicking in that button. You can see the proxies in the project window if you turn on your proxy metadata. So if you click in this flyout menu in the project bin, click on metadata display and then type in proxy and turn this on, click OK. You now have a proxy. Now I move mine over. Yours will probably start way over here on the right hand side. So I've moved mine over here and you can see it says it is attached. So right away it's attached to this file. All right, let me open up a project that I've already brought in a bunch of media and I, I've done this. So you see all of these are attached. And when I was making this project, you, as soon as I import them, the proxy setting would be offline until Media Encoder starts encoding them all in the background. So you'll see them start to uh, populate in the project bin. So when I have these turned on, I have my proxy. So this is red media and I'm playing this on a laptop in real time with proxies. If you want the original media, click inside here. Now one thing you will notice, this proxy was made with the default setting and you'll notice the aspect ratio is off a little bit. If I'm working with red media, I would probably make my own ingest setting for proxies just for red media so I don't uh, have those black bars. It just happens to be a different uh, resolution. Now you can also work with proxies in a project that you already have going. Let's say that these are all of my red files. What you can do is you can start to attach proxies in here. So if I click go to proxies, I can create 
proxies directly from here. So you'll notice this is a smaller menu uh, than what we had before and I can add the ingest preset and I can set the destination. So you can start to use this new feature with uh, any of the projects that you're currently running. You can also go back to proxy and attach proxies. So let's say that you already have a bunch of proxies created and a bunch of red media, but you're using a previous version of Adobe Premiere Pro. No problem, you select your file, you attach the, the preset, and then now you're getting the benefit of the new workflow. And then the last one in the proxy menu is reconnect full resolution media. If something gets disconnected, then you can go and force it to connect that way. So that's the new proxy workflow. I, I think it's really incredible. It's very, very simple. So for people bringing in stuff from big camera files, they can start to work with them right away. Well, Colin, thank you so much for presenting today. We really appreciate it. It was a fun seeing how proxies are now created in Premiere Pro. It is a really big improvement and enhancement to Premiere and something that I know a lot of people have been wanting for a while now. Now, if people want to get a hold of you or learn more about you, how can they do that? Easiest way is to go to videoreveal.com. There's links there to the YouTube channel and also contact form. They can contact me there. Perfect. Well, thanks again, Colin. And to the rest of you, please remember to check out more of our tutorials, videos, podcasts, and articles at digimediapros.com. So until the next tutorial, I'm your host, Marcelo Lewin. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, everyone.